Hi everybody, welcome once again to our Low on Health Rambling, where I kind of go over what I've been doing the last past day or so. Today is of course Thursday, April 29th, 2010, it's around 5.01, got another afternoon one. Uh, just kind of some side things here, uh, actually yesterday was so nice down here in Florida, it was a nice 70, like mid 70 day throughout the whole day because of the rains that came through earlier. I actually decided to go on a second bike ride, which usually like I mentioned before I do like an hour worth of yard work and a half an hour bike ride and then I did another bike ride at around like around this time yesterday uh the same bike route in which case uh the difference is a lot of kids are out i guess because usually when i do it, the kids are at school but when i did it today it was kind of uh, the other day it was kind of weird because like you know kids weren't necessarily loitering but they're hanging out by the library in downtown which i thought was kind of weird and uh kind of blocking the, the the sidewalk and then of course my trail that i take all along the river has you know usual you know benches here or there and the kids were kind of just hanging out there so I'd kind of have to avoid them because I just don't want to bother, you know, having to rise through them. So it's just kind of interesting. And then it was really, really kind of probably hotter than I anticipated uh, with the sun. But interesting. It was nice to do a second bike ride. Uh, also, uh, like I mentioned before, my mom got Netflix. And I was helping set that instant stream thing up for it. In which case, there were some uh, issues with the instant queue. Like, you get, apparently you can't add to your instant queue or you don't have an instant queue to queue up stuff until you actually register a device to Netflix or something or other because for some reason her account didn't have the option to add it to her instant queue which was really weird like the instant queue didn't even exist which I thought was really weird but uh, she got her PS3 disc as I mentioned before you have to have that disc to do on the PS3 and ironically I thought you just needed that disc to download the app to the PS3 but no you need to have that PS3 Netflix disc to stream content period like that disc always has to be in there which I can't, of course think is just ridiculous but that, I guess, apparently is why the whole big should do is with Xbox saying they're the only console that has an app or has it integrated and other systems can't until probably the end of 2010 or something or other, which I just think is just ridiculous. It just sucks that you can't just turn it on and stream stuff. You have to constantly switch the disc out if you watch a lot of Blu-ray movies, which if you have a Netflix account, you're going to be doing. Not that big of a deal when you think about it. You just put it back in, but I just thought it was just another misstep by the PS3, and I once again, I'm regretting getting my mom it, but... It's the Blu-ray player, and the SD DVD kind of bonked down. There's no H, you know, Blu-ray player for the 360, so... Anyway, whatever. Moving on here, let's go and talk about regular stuff real quick. Uh, I finished watching... Uh, actually, I watched two things, in which case I haven't queued up the other one, uh, but we'll do that real quick. Um, I finished watching Red Cliff, which I watched... Uh, there's a theatrical release for Red Cliff, but I watched basically the first and second parts of, like... So it was, like, over four hours long. And then this nice, great epic tale, you know, the unification of China, some great battle things, and, like, once I met, uh, again, I mentioned, it was basically, like, John Woo directed the film. And, man, does it show. I mean, it has some great art direction and great just camera zooms and pans and, you know, basic solid directing. Um, you know... Long epic tale, you get really good character development, really good story, really good action, the whole nine yards, and it's a really, really good film if you like that type of movies, um, in which case I do. If anything, it kind of reminds me of Dynasty Warriors, in which case it's, you know, big epic battles, a lot of hack and slashing. Um, but if you like these Asian type of films, you will like uh, Red Cliff, and I definitely recommend watching it. Apparently there is a Blu-ray theatrical release, which is kind of parts one and part two, kind of a bridge, but uh, really, really enjoyed it. Now, real quick, another movie I watched recently, in which case I didn't actually queue it up, so let me see if I can do this on the fly here, was Daybreakers, which was that vampire flick I mentioned back in January. Um, bring this up real quick. Um, I watched, you know, Daybreakers, in which case, you know, classic vampire flick, yada, yada, yada. Um, kind of a different slant because the vampires have kind of necessarily taken over, but there's a majority and the humans are the minority and they're running out. It's almost like when you think about it, it's almost like a uh, satirical film or kind of a, a piece basically saying, you know, like, blood is oil and we're running out of it. What do you do when you run out of oil? Um, in which case, I find I really, what I like about most of these films is the first ten minutes of these films where it gives you the idea, this is the universe, this is what happened, this is what went down, and the explanation of kind of that universe. I like that almost more than the whole movies when you think about it, just kind of getting the, the raw data, the raw information of what's going on in this world. Um, it's a decent movie, I mean... Kind of has a weak third act, good second act. It kind of wraps up really weirdly. I don't know. It, it's worth it if you get nothing else to see. It's a nice futuristic slant than our normal vampire flicks. Moving on here. Recently I was watching a bunch of videos on a website and they had these uh, ads for this KFC Double Down. Which apparently it's a sandwich that doesn't have a bun. Apparently, now this just caught me off by surprise and I just think it's ludicrous and disgusting that we've come to this. But it's essentially... 
two pieces of bacon in the middle, two pieces of cheese, one on top, one on the bottom, and then two pieces of chicken that act as a bun. In which case, honestly, I just think that's disgusting. I mean, I'm all for fast food, don't get me wrong. But something like this just screams, you know, overindulgence and, you know, just gluttony and just... I don't know, it just made me sick to my stomach hearing that there's a sandwich that doesn't have a bun. And it's just, it, we almost joke about these types of things sometimes, but they've actually done it and it's actually a menu thing. In which case, I'm just sick and biased and hopefully they get rid of it and hopefully nobody else follows suit. But it, if anything, maybe it's just how KFC doesn't have any market share, so they have to do ridiculous stuff like this. Moving on. Um, basically, James Rolfe, which is the guy that does the angry video game nerd, he does a bunch of other stuff, in which case he did this Ghostbusters piece, which I think I mentioned before. I will mention, I don't know, don't big deal. But he actually does, he had done a couple of reviews on board games, in which case he brings up Fireball Island. In which case, I remember Fireball Island back in the day, I had it. And man, just remembering back now, it was an epic board game. Like, it was just huge. It had one of the coolest boards, like, that was like, you know, actual terrain and stuff, and had just actual pit traps. Um, in which case, he does reviews, and, you know, basically check out Cinemassacre.com, which is a bunch of his videos. He's just a really awesome guy, and this was just funny to actually see this old throwback. He also does Mousetrap in another video. Um, okay, moving on here. Keep on going here. Destructoid is basically uh, also in other places, too. That the Reach beta is only going to be out for two weeks. It's going to be ending in May 19th, and it starts, I think, May 3rd. Which is the reason why I have the Halo ODST, a disc from Gamefly. Um, but they've actually mentioned too that the uh, beta is actually going to be tiered off to where basically not all the different things are going to be available. Like May 3rd, there's only going to be three playlists, and then another playlist is going to be introduced on the 7th, and then another playlist introduced on the 14th, and then it ends on the 19th, which I think is kind of stupid for them to tier that, but hey, it's their beta, they can do whatever they want. Unfortunately for me, I'm going to be sending the game back a little prematurely so I can get 3D dot heroes, so I'll probably only be able to not, I won't be able to actually play the generator defense game type, so. No big deal unless I'm thoroughly involved with Halo Reach. But it's just interesting to see it's going to be a short beta. The Halo 3 beta was almost a month, but that's because they extended it. Uh, moving on here, let's go Game FAQs. Poll of the day, what is the name of those popular sugar carbonated beverages that you usually buy in a can or bottle? Uh, me, I always call it soda. I bought, you know, what kind of soda do you want? Oh, pick up some Dr. Pepper soda. You know, I usually say Dr. Pepper, I don't even think soda. But when you're at the restaurant, what kind of soda, what kind of drink would you like? I'm going to pick, of course, soda. Soft drinks probably what I would call it, secondly. In which case, this, of course, shows that soda is the top one. And then Coke, which is interesting. Like, hey, you can eat me a Coke. A lot of people just automatically buy Coke, I guess, when they think drink. And then Pop, which is really interesting. I always want to say it's a Southern thing, but I've been almost Southern most of my life. Besides, you know, Virginia is mid-Southern. In which case, I've always called it soda. Soft drinks kind of up there, too, along with other and cola. But uh, soda is the main thing. Moving on here, Gamefly. Good news for Gamefly is they shipped me a game. They shipped me Risen, which I want to say I tried playing Risen before on the PC and it was kind of broken and I realized it's probably going to be broken on the 360. But I had another Xbox Live person that's playing it and they were enjoying it, so who knows. I do, like I said, I do almost kind of like broken 360 uh, RPGs. So we'll see what, what happens with that, which is cool because this will give me a new game to play because I've been kind of antsy for a new game. Uh, and like this show coming up here, we got 3D Dot Heroes on the 13th coming up. Like I said, I'll have to send Halo back. And then Red Dead Redemption, I'm really, really looking forward to. So, you know, I'm going to have to send Halo and probably Risen back in a timely manner to get those two games. And then, of course, you see the rest there, what's coming up. Uh, kind of see the gaming drought coming up soon. Uh, but um, that's really about it for Gamefly. And right now, of course, what I'm going to do is move on to this, which is going to be RPG Maker. This was a game that was released on, let's see here, I can always just kind of, 19, uh, 2000. Released in 2000, I think I got in 2000, yeah, I probably got in 2000. Uh, I always like the idea of making your own little RPG, your basic kind of sprite-based RPG, in which case that's what this was, of course, the, the pinnacle of this was you can't really transfer them, it was just fun to kind of just see the building blocks and make them, which is what I used it for. Um, once again, for some reason, I put it in a DVD case. This game, of course, came with two huge instruction booklets to kind of teach you how to actually make your own little RPGs. And it was kind of cool. I mean, it gave you the basic template of making your sprite-based RPGs. And they're, I've actually moved on to the, the PC console version of this before I was making little health podcast videos or pictures. Um, in which case, with the advent, you know, to eight years down the line, it was easier to transfer data over the Internet and whatnot as opposed to in 2000. But, you know, I like this. I played it a little bit here and there. It's just fun to see the basic building blocks and make your own little characters and world and storyline and whatnot. I mean, the biggest problem with this, it does show that it supported the mouse, but it doesn't support keyboard, so all text entry was basically using left and right and then entering it, which would take forever. But I enjoyed RPG Maker back in the day, and like I said, I'm just going through the list of stuff. 
But uh, other than that, that's really all I got for you guys. I'm probably just going to relax a little bit more and uh, don't really know what I'm else going to do about today. Probably just relax, watch some BBC stuff and whatnot. But other than that, uh, as always, I'd like to thank the four of you that watched these and uh, have a good day.